Hey, what's up, YouTube? SR Arcade, and today I thought I'd make a video dealing with the Sega Naomi because I haven't played with that in a while. I finally managed to build the compact flash uh, to GD ROM adapter so that you can replace the GD ROM and play games off compact flashcards. And let me tell you, this project was a major pain and it took a really long time to get it all working right but I finally got it working so here's Ikaruga booting up and uh, I just want to make a video to kind of go over some of the pitfalls with this thing if you're thinking about doing this um, some of the problems you're going to definitely run into or at least I did so first of all two major things the CF cards themselves and the pinouts so um, you know, let me go over the pinouts really quick because that part, I, I rewired this thing like four or five times and I, every time you do it, you're like going through all 50 pins. Um, this is on um, wiki.pcbotaku. This is the Sega CF Box article. Take very, very close note of their pinouts on here um, because this is where I screwed up. There's so many different ways of... Uh, labeling these sometimes where you have pin one here they want to do pin two here and then three here and four here so you get all odds on top and all evens on the bottom that was one way I saw it wired it that way and uh, that was not it at all um, take note of, of course the key slots here uh, between the IDE and the uh, SCSI and then of course they have all the pinouts here below this is what I did end up using to build this I basically printed this whole thing out and I'm just basically focusing on these first two columns uh, going pin by pin and of course going over this I solder it and I go back and check it again you wouldn't believe it you like totally at some points you get so screwed up you put wires in the wrong place and you go back and you're like how did I ever do this <laughs> oh my gosh it's just it, it was ready to tear my hair out over this thing because um, there is 50 pins you have to jump um, and I'll, I'll turn it off and show you what I did in a second, but uh, I wanted to go just go over how important this was. This is what I used. I made a little diagram of this. I actually printed out one that was wrong. Just make sure pin 1 and bottom pin 1 is pin 26, and then pin 1 on the side with the key. you got to flip this over if you're going to be soldering on the back of it, and you got to remember the pins all flip over with it. But this gave me so much freaking trouble. I'm, I'm so glad it's actually working. So, these are the instructions I use. The other instructions you might come across are these. Uh, I've seen this floating around. I did build the adapter at first to these instructions, but this guy doesn't use conventional pins for any of his instructions. Um, if you read what he says here, it says, uh, you know, don't follow, um, where does it say that? Yeah, and follow my numbering. This guy, he does the numbering where it's like the other one, but uh, this is his uh, IDE wiring here. I'm not sure which way is which because I don't have this nice CF box. Uh, I really wish I did, but I don't. I had to get one of those very generic IDE C, uh, adapters, and I couldn't tell if my pin one was on this side or that side. I didn't know which way his, um, his header was facing, so it was hard for me to tell. So these instructions here... I followed these at first and I had no success. So I ended up not using this uh, and in the end uh, the Unitech CF guide. I did not use that and I ended up going by the uh, PCB Otaku wiki. So if you're thinking about doing this uh, it is something you want to probably spend uh, several hours doing. Um, use these instructions here. Okay let's talk about CF cards real quick. I had a lot of trouble with the CF cards because um, it wasn't getting them to you know work on the unit, but just getting the cards to format properly. So I didn't have a lot of cards. I only had three. I ended up buying this one, and this one's not working. So I'm going to go through this process. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire how to build this kind of thing because there's other videos on that. But one of the problems I had was formatting this pro uh, this stupid card. This would not format properly. Every time I formatted it, I couldn't write to it or it, it said the boot master boot records were broken. That was the big problem. And it took a while, but I found a great tool um, called MBR Fix. Okay? 
It's a little DOS program, nbrfix.exe. And they have a 64-bit version as well, so you can run it on Windows 7. Um, or if you're running 64-bit system, not necessarily 7. But uh, this fixed my problem with the CF uh, Master Boot Records being corrupt. And I am using to format... Um, ah, here it is. This program here... Well, I'm going to have to reboot it any second because i got to put this card in. I'll do it. Active Partition Manager. It's a freebie. You can find it out there. And um, when I'd go to format these, it'd give me some kind of error message saying there was errors or it wouldn't format or whatnot. So that's when I use the MBR fix. I basically, uh, if you go through it and run a, the application on its own, it'll basically tell you the instructions and you can check the card, just make sure you're not uh, deleting the wrong drive because it will wipe it. And um, just make sure you have the card in there and you basically do the MBR fix and then clean it afterwards and then you're good. So that was my problem and once I was able to get these to format properly, I started having some more success flashing them. Alright, so I got my uh, USB reader here. I'm going to just um, plug this in and uh, let's go through flashing a card real quick because this one's not working at all and this one was Marvel vs. Capcom 2 but I think there's a problem with that image so trying to hook this up with one hand hold on this is just wasting time okay that's in and uh, okay cool it popped up And I've already formatted this one, Naomi CF. And I already have a, a game on there. Uh, you can see I have 245 uh, megabytes. This is a 256 meg card. And I've formatted it in the FAT 16K. So FAT 16 is the format you want. I'm not going to reformat this because it's already set. But uh, you sh as long as you have a drive letter and it's showing uh, primary FAT and it's showing up in the system, that's a good sign. Then you can use um, the no Naomi CF.exe and um, there's Ikaruga again. And of course, the serial number issue. Oh gosh, I write all my serial numbers on the backs of these cards. This one is uh, 3536. And to get, you cannot get the serial number. Um, using USB. You can only do it by uh, hooking it up to IDE or perhaps SATA, I don't know. But I had to, I basically hook up to IDE, I hit get ID. My only problem is I only have one Compact Flash IDE reader and it's currently on the Naomi. But the good news is uh, even with that adapter hooked up, I can still pull it over here and plug it in my IDE port and it still runs. But it's a hassle because I gotta open the computer, plug it directly into the motherboard. I only have one IDE port because those are kind of going away. But okay, I flashed this thing. I'm going to pull it out. And uh, oh, yeah, Ikaruk is looking real good. Let's cut this off and see if this works. That's the other issue with this CF project is getting compact flash cards at work. This is a, a very generic uh, sand disk. I bought this on eBay for a couple bucks. It's some, it, it was some net app. It was a some boot program or something. Okay, so I got a Kingston here. This I've had some good luck with this Kingston. Um, let me actually unhook this so I can show you what I've done. I have to set this down again. Okay. And you can see, um, some people, you know, the instructions say to strip out the header. I didn't do that. That's a lot of work, and uh, I didn't want to spend the time doing that. You can also get a, a ribbon to plug in here, and then you split up the ribbon and do it that way. But for me, I just used uh, a very fine, like, 30-gauge or 28-gauge uh, wire that has, like, a Teflon coating, I think it is, on it. I don't know what the coating is, but it's that heat resistant coating. And this stuff is awesome because it, it, it adheres well to, you know, it solders very well and it's strong and durable. It doesn't just like get weak and flop off. I've never had problems. I use this for jumper wires and fixing PCBs. 
Um, once you solder it on there, it really holds well. I've never had problems with it just breaking off. It's not very brittle. So uh, there you can see. And then for this side, all I did was tack solder right where the header pin meets the PCB. I just tack soldered into there. Okay, so uh, pin one is over by the red LED. And then these are all, this is the odd side. So it goes one, three, five, seven, nine, blah, 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 all the way up to 39. And then this would be the even side, uh, opposite side of the LEDs over here. That's pin two, and it goes up to pin 40. And so, gosh, I, like I said, I took all these wires off like three or four times, I think four, resoldered them all, and then checked them all with a meter over and over. And I did make mistakes even on my last time of doing it. I was like, gosh, how did I do that? Okay, so I'm going to uh, change the card. I'm going to pull out my Kingston. I'm glad this works. Um, plug in this card with Ikaruga again. I just want to make sure this card works. And then we'll plug this back. And now that this works, I can build a nice little box for it and I don't have to worry about breaking it. But I'm probably going to have to order another IDE so I have a spare to hook up to my PC. Another adapter. Plug it into the GD-ROM cable. And then I am using 5 volts for this. I just tacked into the uh, Naomi uh, power supply. Put in my 5 volts. Okay, let's plug it back in, see if it works. Okay. Yeah, when I wired it wrong, it would just go black screen, and it wouldn't start at all. That's when I wired it completely backwards. But I was glad I didn't damage anything, so it could have been worse. Okay, here we go, it's starting up. Fingers crossed. Yeah, error 25, cannot access GD-ROM. That means it can't read the card. So, that sucks. That card is incompatible. So what I'll probably do is, I only have one other <laughs> SD card. Uh, it's in my, my power pack. I'm gonna, um, this one I bought, I actually tracked down the exact same brand they use in the Sega official cards, which I heard is actually not a good thing to do, but I'll try flashing this one again, and maybe I can use that one in my retro zone cart. But, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the video. Those are the pitfalls I've had, and I've spent many hours doing this. It's finally working, at least in the other card, and I'm very happy, so I thought I'd make a video to help out those who are having some trouble. Uh, there's another guy on YouTube, an uh, Australian guy, I believe. I watched his video. He has, like, the complete process, uh, the pick burning and so forth. Go look up his video. It's an awesome video. It kind of uh, helped me out. I burned my own pick as well using my trusty $50 Willem programmer, which blew my mind that it actually worked. I couldn't believe it, but it worked first try. So I got the zero key pick installed um, inside that net dim. So. All right, that's it. So uh, it's a long video. I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you next time.